So the last couple of weeks here at Bike World have been pretty awesome. Well, apart from the rubbish, miserable weather. Here's what we've been up to. I got to spend a day riding with the Geordie funny man, Ross Noble, to not only find about his new TV travel show, but also to discuss the bike he rides in it, the Ducati Multistrada. Plus, we got our Triumph Explorer camera bike ready to take on the world with a little help from the guys from Tourotech. But first, did I mention the rubbish weather? Welcome to Geared Up, the section of the show where we check out the latest biking gear, gadgets, innovations from the shelves of JNS Accessories. Now, with the clocks having gone back, I think it's safe to say that winter is finally here. Therefore, it's time to hang up your summer gloves and get your hands nice, warm and toasty in some winter ones. Now, the key for winter gloves is obviously to keep your hands warm and dry. So today we're going to look at a range from a budget option all the way through to the all singing, all dancing heated options for those who are a bit more hardcore. Now, here at JNS Accessories, they have a number of options on the shelves for around or under £30. And the ones I've picked out today are these, the Frank Thomas Dry Viz Claw, which, as you can probably tell, group your fingers together to retain body heat and also let you do a wicked penguin impression. They're made from a material called Hypertech, plus obviously the standard leather. They have a Hypora breathable membrane and thin slates to keep your hands warm. They also have these handy reflective inserts to make you more visible in the dark, and they're the cheapest option we're looking at today and will cost you just £25. Now how about if you want your gloves to match your bike? A number of manufacturers make their own gloves or manufacture them under licence, and we've picked three of the best for you to have a look at today. Although one thing to bear in mind is, if you do change your bike, you're going to have to change your gloves too, or risk looking like a bit of an idiot. Now the cheapest of the three are these from Kawasaki, costing just £48.95. They're made from something called Fabric 600, have a Hypora breathable and waterproof lining, and the rather cool Kawasaki logo on the fingers, as you can see. Next up are the Triumph Navigator. Not only are these a little bit more substantial, but we can highly recommend these, as our director actually wears them while riding our Triumph camera bike. They've got a Tri-Tech lining, which is waterproof, windproof and breathable, really good knuckle protection, and a storm cuff. Plus they have the Triumph logo on the finger and on the wrist and they go with the Triumph Navigator touring suit and these will set you back £80. What about if you ride an Italian bike? Well if it's a Ducati, how about these? These are the Ducati Tour 14 glove and they're made with goat skin and textile outer with a Hydrotech waterproof inside liner. These also come with some really good armoured knuckle protection, Ducati logo on the finger, little splash of Ducati red and they'll set you back £85. Now it's time to get slightly more hardcore with these. Now everyone knows that Knox makes some of the best gloves around with the Handroid. Great for if you're going racing or for summer riding. But did you also know they make winter gloves? These textile gloves are actually new for 2013 and believe it or not they come on a really good budget £65. For that you get a poor oil membrane to keep your hands dry, a thin silate inner layer for warmth, plus their painted scaphoid protection, which if you remember our visit to Knox where we went to go and see how they make their gloves, can make a huge difference in saving your broken bones. And these are the reason why I wear these gloves when I'm riding in the winter. Next up I've picked a couple of gloves from Risha who are known for making winter gear. Now, first up is the Ice Polar GTX, which is the first of our gloves to feature Gore-Tex. It's made from goat skin and textile once more. It has a tri-fleece lining to keep you extra warm, some really good armour, plus it's the first of our gloves to be CE approved. Now these will cost you £89.99, they're a really good set of gloves, but if you don't want to fork out that little bit extra for the official Gore-Tex version, you can get their Polar gloves, which cost just £70 and still feature a super fabric inner lining. Next up is Furigan, who started off making gloves back in the 70s, so they really do know what they're doing. These are the top of the range efforts called the Land Pro Evo, and not only are they CE approved, they're the first gloves ever to be EN511 2006 approved, with level 2 for warmth and level 1 for waterproofness. In other words, they've been tested in a really posh, fancy finish factory, and they've came out with flying colours. Now, these are the only gloves that are fully goat skin and have a waterproof inside membrane. Plus, they have the Furigan dual lining system, which means you have a warm lining on top to keep your hands, well, extra toasty, and a thinner lining underneath to allow you to have much more feel on your controls. Now, these will set you back £100, but in my eyes are really worth it. But if you wanted a slightly cheaper option, why not go for the Furigan Apali, which have a lot of the same technology, but only cost 60 quid. Finally, on to the most expensive set of normal gloves we're looking at today, which is the Alpine Stars Archer Extra Fit. These again are made from full goatskin leather. They have Gore-Tex and Extra Fit technology to make them warm, dry and comfortable. And they even have a little wiper built in. Thing is, they cost £140. And while they look pretty trick, especially with the little fluorescent inserts, they don't feel that thick and substantial for a full winter glove. Maybe these were designed for the Italian winters. Now, if you really have to head out in the snow, ice, wind, rain, pretty much the worst conditions you can imagine, I'd like to recommend something a little bit different. And that's the XO2 Stormguard Heated Glove. The great thing about the Stormguard glove is they can provide heat in two ways. Either you can fix a small permanent line to your battery that sticks out the side of your fairing, which is very easy to do, and then you run the wire down the sleeves of your jacket and into the glove like so. Or, for an extra £43, if you have the XO2 body warmer, you can get yourself one of these, a little power pack that will sit in your pocket and will keep you heated and has a little remote control with three different heat settings on it. 
On top of that, these are made from full cow leather, have a hippomer membrane to keep you dry and a thin silane layer to keep you warm. Plus these proper extreme weather hardcore gloves are the same price as the Alpine Stars at £140. So out of all of these gloves, the ones I would truly recommend, and I can say that because I've been wearing them for the last year and they've never let me down, plus they represent excellent value for money, are the Knox Textile. A bargain and only 65 quid. So we're here at PH Motorcycles in Crawley to discuss a very sexy motorbike, the Ducati Multistrada. And uh, the reason we've got Ross Noble here is not only because he's another long haired man who likes motorbikes, yes. makes me feel less of a freak, um, is because you actually own one, don't you? I do, yes. And you have owned one for six months. For six months now, yes. I believe you've been doing something rather special on it. I have, you? I've just made a television programme uh, where I ride the bike around Britain. It's day one, it's the Ace Cafe in London. I've turned up, gonna have the setting of a lovely little biker calf. And um, turns out it's uh, such an upsetting that uh, it's being used for film all the time. Yes, it's on, it's on Dave, uh, Tuesday nights, 10 o'clock, and, and the idea of the show... Did you deliberately make sure it didn't clash with Bike World? That's the important that's thing. That's the first thing I said Same. when they said, you can make this show, they said, I said, whoa there, <laughs> I checked. And I haven't found out what it clashes with yet, but uh, no, so what I do is I, I get, um, I've got, I'm on Twitter, yeah. got my Twitter followers, and then I send out a tweet and I say, what should I do? Where should I go? What's happening? And then I just uh, send. So literally, then, depending on what people on Twitter said to and you. And then people just tweet and say, we're doing this, we're doing that. And then I just go there and uh, and arrive and it happens. Right? Okay. And then, so what's brilliant about that is, I mean, obviously from a TV point of view, it's a great way of making a telly show. But it's also a brilliant way of of going for a ride yeah. because you end up in places that you wouldn't necessarily. You know, if you sit down and you make a decision yourself, think I'm going to ride up to Scotland or I'm going, and you can sort of end up going the same routes all the you time. You find right? your favourite roads. No, yeah, you're completely exactly. right. And I, I do that all the time. You Whereas just say, you have specific it's, routes you it's take. It's the sort of um, tele equivalent. It's the electronic equivalent of just sticking a pin in a map and then that's where you go. I've seen that you've got a few friends that have been roped into it as well, Bob Mortimer. Yeah, somebody uh, somebody tweeted me and said that they had, because uh, this is because it doesn't have to be, yeah. come and look at this amazing bit of scenery. It's more like um, somebody, this by the way is, is somebody this is you tweeting. tweeting. This is, I wonder what yeah, that was. That's, that's, on, that's on my phone like that, was tweeting <laughs> like that. Um, so, uh, somebody tweeted me and said, I've got a three kilogram bag of custard, which makes up a thousand, portions of custard. I got this custard and then I asked who's got milk. I could have just gone to the shop but I went who's got milk? Somebody worked at a dairy or their dad worked at a dairy farm. So we went from Swansea to uh, Cardiff to Kent and then the next thing uh, I couldn't use that milk because it wasn't pasteurised so I ended up in Tunbridge Wells in a cafe and then uh, Bob Mortimer who lives in Tunbridge Wells then I tweeted him and he came along. We ended up filling water pistols full of um, custard and squirting it and pass us by. So it's like one thing triggers a series of events, which, yeah, and then along the way, you know, my followers tweet me and then I've got mates and, and uh, people who are also on there. So yeah, like when I ended up in St. Helens, uh, Johnny Vegas lives in St. Helens, so he tweeted, he becomes part of the show. So it's quite, uh, yeah. And I know, this is one thing I'd say, so if you do follow Ross on Twitter, whatever you do, never correct his spelling or grammar. <laughs> no. I've never I... seen a man as rapid, but no, that really does my head in as well, that people but pick up on what, that. What I do is I retweet yeah. the person picking me up on it, and then, and then uh, you know, I don't encourage any sort of cyberbullying, but I just <laughs> allow my 370,000 just to dive on this. <laughs> He's dyslexic, why would he? If you've had somebody just didn't like, and just like said, yeah, get him, get him guys, yeah, go, and you set go. him off. Just set the dogs, you know? So yeah, so it's but but the, uh, you know sort of you know obviously it's a comedy show but at the at the absolute sort of fundamental base layer of it mm. is 
it's just a really good excuse to just get on the bike every morning. And it's the, the simplicity of just sitting on the bike and going, where am I going? Yeah. And that's brilliant. You know? No, and I know, sort of I know how much you love your biking and, yeah. and that is something that massively appealed to you. And when you say, when you went into the shop to look at the bikes, was there a big part of it thinking, right, I need a bike that's going to be comfortable, that actually is going to be, you know, fun to ride still yeah, and have the yeah, power yeah, and yeah. I can sit on all day and do the miles and yes. yet, you know, not get bored. Because, you know, just to kind of recap, you're obviously mad into off-roading. Obviously, people have seen yeah, you doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. dawn to dusk with us yeah, and uh, yeah, loads of right. enduro training and things like that. So, um, yeah, riding on the road, it, it, yeah. what made you pick the Multistrada? Well, I, uh, it got a bit silly. I kept buying more and more bikes. It sort of seemed a bit, it just seemed a bit excessive to have loads of bikes. Um, so I just started, I started sort of scaling down a bit. Mm. You know, I just thought I'll get From 30 to 25. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you've got to retain a, a track bike, obviously. Yeah. You've got to have a road bike. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, you know, but you don't need, you know, like I was, I was justifying buying bikes by going, yeah, but I need one for like on a Sunday, you know. <laughs> I need one for I Monday, need, different like, one, yeah. Thing, that's you know. true. Um, but that's the mad thing. That, but that's what I love about bikes is the fact that you can have ten bikes for the price of a sports car. Yeah. Okay then, so you chose the Multistrada for the TV show Freewheeling. I've had one only a week compared to you having it for six months and I've only done about a thousand miles on it. Yeah. I think it's pretty awesome. You've done how many miles now? About 5,000 now, yeah. And what are your first impressions? Now I should possibly point out that we both have had, should we say, the higher end versions. I've had the Gran yes. Turismo one, which is about 16,995 and has all the kind of the adventure stuff on it, the 78 litre panniers. Yeah. Um, I've got a Pikes Peak version, which is good, which has got none of the practical stuff on yeah. it. So it's had all the practical stuff taken off. And put, replaced uh, with carbon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is yours is about 17 and a half, I think. So about the same. And yeah. while mine is like the top of the range adventure touring one, yours is the top of the range sports version. Mm. Obviously named after the famous Pikes Peaks race, yeah. which I believe didn't it win it? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It's amazing that Pikes Peak race. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, up round through the mountains and then yeah, on the dirt on on and off the dirt and all the rest of it. So um, you're, it is the trickiest version, should we yeah, say? And like, so I must admit, I'm a little bit jealous because mine's yeah. got the one I was riding with the big panniers. Yeah. It's got such a big ass. But, but I can't, say. I can't stress enough. I, I cannot stress enough that I didn't receive the yeah. bike for free. Yep. I paid for it. Pay for your own cash. It's not me. This is not an advert for. Me. <laughs> I am in no way. I am in no way a spokesman for it at all. And Teddy um, pulls a thing off through a Village Cathy t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, the odd free t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. But for an all-round bike, mm. for me, I don't think you could find... There's a lot of brilliant bikes, loads of brilliant bikes that I've owned yeah. that will do all of the jobs, yeah. you know. Um, you know, you've got you've got the you know obviously the GS. For, yeah. If you're talking about adventure bikes, that yeah. Do the you know you've got the GS, which is great, which is. We, we both spent time at Simon Pavey School. Yeah. If I was doing a big adventure, I'd prefer the GS. To be fair, than the Multistrada, even the Nile Triumph. Every Explorer. time. Yeah. I, if I was yes, exactly Triumph for Explorer again, great. If if I was going to I was going to ride across Morocco. Yeah. And I was going to be on a load of gravel roads. I wouldn't want to have a 17 grand bike <laughs> that, I mean, I know those ones are... You the know, standard one, by the way, is just over 12,000 pounds, and that still has a skyhook suspension and everything else, yeah, which is yeah. incredible. So 150 brake horsepower weighs, what, 245 kilos. Mm. Yours probably weighs a little bit less, because you have all the carbon bits and, you know, yeah, and stuff like that. Well, mine probably weighs a bit more with all the panniers and, and yeah, things yeah. like that on it. But then it depends how fat you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all works out. And our it hair, our hair weighs a lot. Yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah, of like made of gold, so I it is I think, yeah, ultimately, the Multistrada is because it's got the mode, you can put it in enduro mode. This is mode. one of the big things. It's got enduro mode to go off road. I mean, well, let's let's break down what I, well, well, I found exciting well, about what the was gonna, well, what I was well, going to say. You, so, yeah. just, what I was going to say though was, it's got the enduro mode, but ultimately, the Multistrada is a sports bike mm. that's been shaped into a, an yeah. adventure bike yeah. style. Well, what I love about this huh. is the fact that I'm really enjoying this, and I, hopefully the viewers are, <laughs> are enjoying this. But all I've got in my head is the image of my wife just going, shut up. <laughs> <laughs>
Just shut up. <laughs> but no, carry on. No, sorry, yeah. But I mean, with... <laughs> just like, get home for tea. Stop talking. No, no, man. Sorry. It's just like, stop talking about... I know this is a bike That's review. That's right, we'll just do, we'll a, do a bit of technical is, stuff. This is a bike review show. Yeah, and yeah. Well, it's all right, like, it's yeah. good. We are talking this bikes, is, though, so yeah. it's okay. This She'll is, understand. I'd just like to point out that this is the only thing that I will talk seriously about. Yeah. <laughs> and so, do you catch what's going on? What? I found amazing about it, as you say, as a road sports bike in the venture kind of fairing and yeah, disguised yeah, as one, yeah. it delivers at a level I never thought a bike with upright bars and that kind of variety position would do. I mean, it's got the Skyhead suspension. Yours being the 2013 version, yeah. same as mine. That came in, and, and even on the stand one, they didn't charge any more for it when they brought it out. Now, what this does is it's not like reading the road ahead and adjusting the suspension, but it's all about keeping the bike level, isn't it? So normally, if you accelerate, the bike sits back, you lose the feeling at the front, and your yeah. steering is a bit rubbish. This will not allow it to happen. Or when you brake heavily, obviously it dives the front of the yeah, forks yeah. and you lose a bit of the back. The great thing about this is it keeps the bike so stable. And I mean, it seems to just adapt. If you're going around town, it'll be soft enough to let you go over yeah, the bumps yeah, and everything yeah, else. Yeah. And again, you can put it in the modes to adjust Chuck the suspension. The yeah. Yeah. But then when you want to get a bit hardcore, a lot of the guys I was speaking to never even take it out of touring mode, which is 150 brake, but a slightly softer mat. Put it in the sports mode, and I had a blast on that. It felt like I was riding a sports bike, even yeah. with the big power. I had to remind myself of those panniers on as you go around corners yeah, yeah. and go through traffic. But the, let's be honest, the the dash and the way that everything works is needlessly complex. Yes, it, it's stu you know to put. It did the, take me about three yeah. days to work out how yeah. to go in and change things in the set. I know how to change the modes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then it gets a you little bit. You can change modes, and then you've got you can use the. Uh, you know, there's a switch over here that you can go through and it'll t tell you the, you know, yeah. different you know, settings for different, everything you can set. Yeah. Oh, it, there is, I mean, there are a million things you can do on it. And that is when you first get on it, and because it's keyless as well, yeah. which is brilliant. Yeah. The fact you just leave the key in your pocket and you turn it on. It takes a while to get used to that when you get but, off the bike, though, not you just walk away and be like, where's my But no trying keys? to work out how to put the uh, steering lock on, yeah. that's a bit, you know, to start with, that yeah. is... I don't know how to do it, I've had it for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't what? even know, there's a steering lock, it's, oh, <laughs> tell me all about it. <laughs> what, so you've just been leaving the bike? Yeah. Anyone could just wheel it away. But what's good about that is once you get the hang of the basics, then all that stuff where you can muck about with it and change the settings and yeah. all that sort of stuff, you can sort of customise it. What is initially massively frustrating, once you figure that out, that is actually, I quite like it now. Yeah, no, you can, it, it is you very can, technical. Yeah. And, and the great yeah. thing is, is little things they brought in this year as well. Before the screen, you had to have two nuts that you had to have the wheels, didn't you, to do, so you couldn't really do it in your riding. You just a little clip now that you clip can pull up, and on two yeah. geezer like me gets on the bike, bang. The standard one has all of these features. It just doesn't have the sidebars or engine cages, doesn't have the fog lights like mine yeah, has, doesn't yeah, have yeah. the carbon bits yours have, or the yeah. turn cans. Yeah. It has the skyhook, it has all the modes, it has the traction control, it has the ABS, it has pretty much everything, and that's under £13,000. And I think yeah. when you're looking at ours costing almost 17 grand and yours a little bit over, that's impressive. They've managed to get all that technology, all that power yeah. in a bike that's going to set you back 12 and a half grand. Yeah. It's one of those bikes that you say to people who may be thinking, oh, I've been riding sports bikes for 20 years, yeah, and I yeah, don't yeah. quite want to lend myself over a litre superbike anymore. It's something wrong, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I couldn't fully recommend. commit to the big. Yeah. You know, to the big full on adventure bike. Yeah, if they don't want to get on the GS route just yet, this is the ultimate in between. It gives you that buzz, it gives you that excitement, it gives you that passion as well, being a GCAT, and it really does. It gives you yeah. the sound, it gives you the rawness, but it's also really refined, if that makes sense. And I've literally, I would be, I don't think I could pick another bike over it in that category. Yeah, that's why I bought it. Welcome to Bike World Winter On Tour, the section of the show where we look at everything to do with adventure biking and touring. So this week we headed down to Jack Lilly Triumph to get some cool new parts fitted to our Triumph Explorer camera bike to hopefully turn it into a world conquering, non-indestructible, hardcore off-road machine. Let's be honest, if you've spent £15,000 on a brand new adventure bike, you want it to be able to withstand a few knocks here and there, even if the closest you're going to get to going off-road is to drive through a few puddles. To do this, we enlisted the help of a company whose name is synonymous with some hardcore off-road action. So whether you're thinking about going the long way down, the long way round, or just a long way around the Oxford Ring Road while looking cool, it's Touratech you want to speak to. So today we're going to be looking at protection for your bike. And no, we're not talking about the rubber kind. The parts that we fitted came to handguards, sidebars, radiator guard, headlight guard, and a rear mud guard. 
Now, once again, we enlisted the help of James from Jack Lilly Triumph to give us a hand, and, well, it was quite lucky that we did. I'm not saying we couldn't have fitted all these parts ourselves, but it turned out to be a bit more fiddly than we expected. But that's because they are aftermarket parts and not the OE stuff. So first up, we fitted the stainless steel headlight guard, which is not only to protect you from crash damage, but from any debris thrown up from the bike in front. Plus, let's be honest, it looks pretty factory too. One of the great things about this headlight guard, it is very easy to fit. And it has a quick release mechanism that if you need to suddenly persuade your missus that, no, no, I haven't been taking my brand new shiny bike out off road, it's pretty handy and it will set you back about 90 quid. Next up was the kind of rear mug guard stroke number plate guard, and this only cost you 23 pounds. So the point of this is not only to protect all your lovely new shiny matching his and her touring gear from all the mud and dirt that could be thrown up by the back wheel, but also to protect any panniers you may have fitted, which cost quite a bit. Now, two of the easiest things to damage on your bike if you should drop it while going off road is the tank and the fairings. But not to worry, Tech have a solution for this with some rather mean looking sidebars. Now, costing 280 quid, these things will stop you damaging any expensive plastics or even worse, damaging your fuel tank, which could leave you stranded in the middle of nowhere. Now, one of the most important areas to protect on any adventure bike is the radiator, specifically on the Triumph Explorer because it has a triple engine and therefore it has a rather large one. So the Tech radiator guard definitely adds a lot more protection. It's designed to let the engine breathe naturally as well. Now this does also look really rather trick, but it was the most fiddly piece of equipment we had to fit during the day and it took us absolutely ages to get all the right plastings and fairings off to allow us to fit the radiator guard. And the cost for this is about 100 quid. Next up was the cool looking hand guards, which are closed, virtually indestructible and designed not only to protect your bike and leaders, but your hands as well. Now these were actually pretty easy to fit, which is handy because they didn't come with instructions. And one thing I should point out that the instructions that actually did come with most of these parts are just pictures with a couple of part numbers on. But between our combined brain power, we managed to work it out. Now these will set you back about 100 quid, which works out at 50 pounds a hand. So in total, this level of protection should set you back about 650 pounds, but obviously that will vary depending on the make and model of your bike. It may seem a lot, but without it, you could be doing so much more damage to your bike, not only which could cost you loads, but could genuinely leave you stranded in the middle of nowhere, which no one wants. And for more information of any of the parts we got fitted or anything else, just head to our website, bikeworld.co.uk. For our competition this month, we've got an awesome set of the XO2 Stormguard heated gloves to give away, worth £140. To win, simply answer this question. Which season follows autumn? Is it A, winter, B, spring, or C, summer? To enter, call 0901 061 6000. Calls cost £1 from BT Landlines, calls from other networks may be higher, and calls from mobiles will be considerably more. Or text bike, followed by your answer A, B, or C to 66010. Text costs £1 plus the cost of one standard network rate message. You can also enter via post. For details, head to bikeworld.co.uk forward slash competition. Competition is open to UK residents only, and entrants must be 18 years or over. Entries made after lines close midnight on Wednesday, the 27th of November 2013, will not be counted, but may still be charged. That's it for this show. Don't forget to like our Facebook page to stay up to date with all the latest. Plus, you can head to bikeworld.co.uk to discuss what you've seen on the show and suggest things that you'd like to see on a show in the future in our forum section. Check out our latest vlogs and don't forget we have a brand new on-demand section where you can watch previous episodes of the show in full. Mm -hmm.